Welcome back to the channel, Jim here from Tokyo. Today is an incident we'll have a look at from 2017. It was an out of air emergency with an emergency ascent. Brought to us by a friend of the channel, Louise R. Thank you so much, Louise. The original link can be found down below. Here's how it's gonna go today. I'm gonna to read the description that was in the video. We're gonna watch the video in its entirety. It's short, it's only two minutes. And then I'm gonna go through my take on this incident. So let's have a look at the text first. So the text reads, the water temperature was three degrees C or 37 Fahrenheit. This was during winter and in salt water. The diver shown in the video was in a side mount configuration with two 12 liter or 85 cubic foot tanks, while his buddy who ran out of gas used a single 12 liter or 75, it says 75, I'm sure it was 85 also. 85 cubic foot. The purpose of the dive was underwater work, more specifically running a line from shore to several underwater items that were marked for removal. The diver who took the video, that was diver one I believe, the diver who took the video did not participate in the work portion but tagged along to take video. That's interesting. The average depth was around 13 and a half meters or 44 feet and the total dive time was just over 50 minutes. Gas management by the out of air diver was the leading cause of the accident. He simply breathed his single tank dry. The attempt to signal the upcoming out of air is shown in the video. The actual signs are not visible. After getting his buddy's attention by grabbing the fins, the out of air diver moved a hand to touch his neck seal. After a delay, he touched his second stage regulator. All movements were extremely slow, and as a result, the buddy thought the diver was just cold, plus maybe reseeding the second stage in his mouth. He clearly did not understand and made that very clear. We're talking about the side mount diver here. While the communication between the two divers was going on and failing, the diver ran out of gas. Losing his buoyancy and being above his buddy made further touch and visual contact impossible. The only resolution at this point was an emergency surface ascent. Luckily, he remembered his training and controlled his ascent as best as possible, constantly exhaling from his lungs. He remained unhurt. I should note, you'll see in the video, the diver filming has 60 dives and the side mount diver has 1100 dives under his belt. Okay, let's have a look at the video. Pretty green water, isn't it? Three degrees C, that is some cold water right there. See the side mount diver? All right, diver one pulls number two's fins, so two is the side mount diver. Now look at this. All right, you can see he's clearly confused, but yeah, side mount just kind of goes back. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? It doesn't stick with it. Okay, diver two. So diver two can't find diver one anymore. Diver one's the filmer. And diver one's losing his points. He's going up right now out of air. You can hear him struggling with it. Unable to reach the buddy. This is a heartbreaker, man. Yeah, so he's leaving him. He's going for the ascent. We can see the bubbles. He was at about 13 meters, 42 feet. Oh, it says max depth. Hmm. You can see he's going about the speed of the smallest bubbles, which I wouldn't care if I were out of air. I mean, you want to get up. Oh, he made it, and he's really gasping for air here. Well done, sir, well done. Endeavor made unhurt. And that's a wrap. All right, so I'll go into the analysis here, points that I had. Um, now, if you if you go to the link of this video and you see the comments that other people had, that side mount diver really took took some heat on that thread, and you might think uh, deservedly so, and, and maybe I, I would as well. Um, let's let's just have a look first here. Now, now two two main points for me. Uh, one obviously is air management, right? So diver one. Right, so diver one was the out of air diver. Um, there's a lot we don't know about the situation here. It says here that he was tagging along. 
you know, who knows what that meant. Maybe it wasn't even his official buddy. Tagging along might be, you know, he was just coming along for uh, to film. And maybe, maybe, I'm just devil's advocate here, maybe he was pulling on people a lot or signaling to people a lot during this dive. Like, I'm not saying crying wolf, but uh, maybe, maybe there was a lot going on where he was trying to communicate things that were confusing at other points in the dive. It was a 50 minute dive. I have no idea, right? We don't know what happened before the video. Um, that being said, the out of air is absolutely excusable. For those of you who are not scuba divers out there, running out of air is about like running out of gas in your car. It's never a surprise. It's never really a mystery. You know you were running low. You had management details, right? You, you've got a gauge. You check it once in a while. You know you were running low. It was not an accident. You knew you were taking a chance, uh, right? When you run out of gas, it's not like, oh my gosh, I just had a full tank. You know, you ignored it. And uh, a diver should never run out of gas. I, so that was absolutely inexcusable, right? But that comes back, uh, an issue for me, was the whole dive briefing, which we don't know about. The dive briefing and the buddy check. Um, now, in the briefing, uh, or just the buddy check between the two divers, uh, I would recommend folks to have uh, an air limit, right? So the first one to reach 100 bar or 60 bar or 70 bar, whatever it is, we're turning back or we're heading to the surface, whatever the configuration of the dive is. Before the dive, you have a pre-agreed upon turn pressure. Uh, you might check out rock bottom or turn pressure uh, GUE. Uh, that's the, the system that I generally use. That perhaps was absent here and perhaps other things were absent in the buddy check as well for example diver one and diver two were in very different configurations it might be the single tank diver did not know how to get air from that two tank diver from the the side mount diver right it, I, and I, honestly I, I've never dove with a side mount diver, so I don't know either. Is it a, a primary donate or is there a secondary situation going? I don't know. That's something that all of us should sort out in the buddy check, right? Uh, I will check, okay, if, if there's someone who's, who, even even if it's, if it's someone who looks to have a configuration that I'm familiar with, I'm gonna ask them, okay, if I'm out of air, how are you going to give me air? You know, my, my new buddy that I'm meeting for the first time on this boat. He would say, oh, you know, you're going to get it from here, or I'm going to give you this, or I'm going to do this, and then I know. And I'll tell him for me, okay, I'm going to give this, and here's what I'm doing. We're going to go to the surface, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that might have been missing here. So it might have been part of the problem is that Diver 1, uh, who ran out of air, didn't know how to get air from Diver 2, and that might have added to the stress, although certainly the signal should have been more clear, obviously. Uh, Diver 2 obviously looked very cranky here, uh, you know, w was not really overly curious about finding out what was wrong with Diver 1, and, you know, that, in a lot of people's estimation, and I would say as well, uh, inexcusable. You know, it was a long dive, 50 minutes and three degrees Celsius. I've never been in three degrees Celsius. That's a pretty cold dive. So 50 minutes, that's a pretty long dive too for that temperature. So, you know, everybody might have been cranky in this situation. I don't know. From the view of, of Diver 2, uh, this really highlights the need in my mind for wet notes. So I have a link here for my wet notes video. All right, I find wet notes an incredibly essential tool. So Diver 2, you know, instead of, instead of this, you know, for me, if I'm really puzzled by a diver, and if it's not three degrees, that's pretty cold. But you know, I'll pull up my wet notes and I'll ask, you know, what's up? Hand it to them, you know, with the pencil. Let them write out in detail what's going on if I can't get it with signals. Um, you know, maybe that also would have let the person, you know, show a gauge or I don't know, but wet notes are always useful because who knows what that problem could have been. Last, the emergency ascent. Uh, I think, you know, looks, by all looks of it, it was very, very well done, right? I mean, you could hear him exhaling on the way up. For those of you who aren't scuba certified, right, the general rule is in training, we're not supposed to pass our smallest bubbles because we don't want to exceed a speed that's going to possibly cause bubbles to form in our blood, right, from nitrogen uh, off-gassing. Uh, however, in the real deal, there is no speed limit, right? There's, it's just a yes or no answer. Did I get to the surface alive and be able to breathe or not? So too slow, you know, if I'm, if I'm going from too deep, I'm not gonna care how long it's gonna take me to get up there. I just wanna get up there. 
but it appeared his speed was looked reasonable compared to the bubbles I was watching go up. So and the diver was unhurt uh, and lived to dive another day. So we're all grateful for that. So well well done on that emergency ascent. Of course, you have to be exhaling the whole time for those of you who aren't divers out there, because as you're going up, closed lungs right would be expanding. And so we exhale as we go up to allow the expanding air to escape from our mouths so as not to burst our lungs. All right. Final scorecards for this dive. Side mount diver two receives an F. Despite being the senior diver on this dive with 1100 dives, diver two suffered from a profound lack of curiosity when it came to diver one's issue. In an underwater environment, any problem could be a life-threatening problem, and no problem should go unexplored and or unsolved. You had one job, Diver 2. Diver 1, who was filming, receives a score of D+. Diver 1 failed in gas management, the number one important rule for scuba, not to run out of gas. Diver 1 also failed in successfully communicating his out of air emergency to his buddy due to being timid and or not understanding the procedure correctly and or being intimidated by Diver 2's superior dive number. However, Diver 1 gets serious props for successfully executing an emergency ascent and saving his own life. Okay, well that was about everything I had out of this dive. So uh, thank you again to Louise R for contributing that. I always appreciate folks sending me links to interesting dives they would like analyze, so please keep it up. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. It definitely helps the channel if you can press that subscribe if you like these kind of videos we're uploading once a week. And if you got something out of the video, we always appreciate a punch on the like. And the comments down below are always welcome. Well, thanks again, and I will see you next time at the beach.